GoldenEye was the first James Bond film starring Pierce Brosnan, and this 1995 film remains one of the most beloved Bond movies. This film, along with all of the James Bond, Indiana Jones, and George Lucas Star Wars films, is one that I have watched many, 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 many times in my life, and it never gets old. But for the sake of variety, it's sometimes nice to be able to experience an alternate cut of your favorite movie. That's why I put together GoldenEye, the key to the end. Now, full disclosure, this is in no way an improved or definitive version of the film. It is merely an alternate version that gives fans the chance to enjoy their favorite film in a new way, and there really are only a small number of changes made here, but I'll get to that in a moment. As you probably know, I have done over a dozen fan edits of various Indiana Jones works, and you can check those out in the link above. Bond has always been right up there with Indiana Jones among my favorite franchises, and Pierce Brosnan was my first James Bond. I think most people would agree that GoldenEye is Brosnan's best, and a worthy entry in the top tier of James Bond movies. But what if you could watch the film without being sure of what's around the corner? Well, again, I've only made a very small amount of simple changes, so don't expect anything too impressive, but for the rest of this video, I want to go over the changes which I have made, so if you for sure know that you want to take a look at this fan film yourself, you might as well pause this video and go watch it for the best experience. To do that, just take a look at the pinned comment down below, and that will direct you to probably my Discord, unless I have to change it to something else and look for the Leaks and Edits tab, where you should be able to find a link. But you must own a copy of GoldenEye in order to watch or download it, so please, please, please do support the original filmmakers by buying a copy of 1995's GoldenEye first. So, now I'm going to talk about the changes I have made here. Once again, I'm keeping this edit very simple, but when you watch it, you're going to occasionally come across something that you might not have seen before, and that's the goal of this version. And the changes you will be seeing are almost entirely in one of two categories. The reintroduction of deleted scenes and the replacement of music in the opening and ending credits. Now, let's get to it. No change to the opening gun barrel, Brosnan may have the best gun barrel of all the Bonds, and as an aside, the music in GoldenEye is from composer Eric Serra. This was Serra's only Bond film, and he gave the film a unique sound which is unlike anything else in the franchise. For some people, Sarah's music isn't a good fit for a Bond film, and the car chase scene is the best example of that, but no, I have not replaced that track in this edit. If you enjoy the music of this film, you should definitely check out Leon the Professional, which features a similar soundtrack from Sarah. Now then, the first change can be found in the opening seconds of the film immediately following the gun barrel. It's a short scene that establishes the Cold War era Soviet Union setting and gives us a little morsel of Brosnan's Bond in sneak mode. Like the other deleted scenes in the film, it was unnecessary and helped to improve with the pacing, but because we want to watch an extended version of the film, it's going back in. And the next change is probably the most interesting and distinctive choice I've made for this project. I love Tina Turner's GoldenEye, but this fan edit gave us a chance to feature an alternative theme song that might have been, namely the proposed track from Ace of Bass. The band and their music are so distinctly of that era, and I think this song is a good match for Eric Serra's distinct of its time soundtrack. This track was recorded as a proposal and lacks the polish of a completed work, but for our purposes it does the job. After the track was rejected by the filmmakers, Ace of Bass repurposed it for their song The Juvenile. And about 30 minutes into the film we reach the one edit that falls outside the two categories I mentioned earlier, and this is specifically an improvement of a goof. Originally, the answer to Boris's riddle was keys, but the filmmakers thought it would be funnier to change it to knockers. However, Natalia doesn't type enough letters, and it always looked funny to me. I adjusted the timing of certain things and changed the audio so it makes sense, a simple change to make. And that brings us to the middle of the film where the bulk of the changes have been made. There are a number of scenes here that were deleted from this part of the film due to pacing, and in my effort to restore these scenes, it was necessary to rearrange the order of a few things. For example, in the film, we go from Natalia arriving at the train station, to Wade fixing the car, to Natalia entering a computer store and contacting Boris, to Bond and Wade arriving at Sukovsky's, and then Natalia goes to the church. But because I had two deleted scenes of Bond and Wade that needed to be isolated from the other Bond and Wade scenes, 
I broke the Natalia computer store scene into two separate ones and moved the Wade fixing the car scene in between them. So, from the top, the sequence of the film now plays out like this. Bond and Wade depart from the airport like normal. Natalia arrives at the train station like normal. Then we get a brief deleted scene of Wade annoying Bond with his garden nonsense. Then Natalia arrives at the computer store. Then the scene of Wade fixing the car. Then the second half at the computer store where Natalia makes contact with Boris. Then another brief deleted scene of Wade giving Bond some useful information. Then we get a very brief deleted moment of Natalia preparing to enter the church and this leads into the actual scene of Natalia at the church. Then Bond and Wade arrive at Zukovsky's. Since we already saw Natalia at the church, we now go directly into a wonderful deleted scene at the club introducing Zukovsky, which leads directly into the actual scene that takes place there. The next few minutes remain unchanged until we get one final deleted scene of Boris and Oromov in the train. In the film, we don't ever see these two characters interact, so this is a nice little moment to throw back in there. So that brings us to the end credits and the final change of the film. I do think Eric Serra has produced a beautiful song that plays in the end credits, but it just isn't a good fit for a Bond film. The ending needs to be bombastic, grand, Bondian. And as I told you before, some of the music Eric Serra produced for the film, while excellent, aren't good fits for a Bond film. And the producers of the film realize that too which is why they rejected Sarah's track, A Pleasant Drive in St. Petersburg, and hired the aptly named John Altman to write the excellent piece of music used during the tank sequence. But I found that the Eric Serra track works fairly well as an end credits piece, so that's where I put it. It still isn't perfect, but I think it gives the ending of the film a more appropriate feel. And I did trim out a last little bit of dialogue between Bond and Natalia, so it fits in nicely. And that's it. Once again, if you want to watch the film, you'll have to go join my Discord and try to find a link in the Leaks and Edits tab, and you'll find links to my Discord in the pinned comment down below and in the video description. Once again, you must own a copy of GoldenEye, so please support the original filmmakers by purchasing that first. Do be sure to help me out by giving me a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to let me know your thoughts about GoldenEye and the re-edit which I have done. Till next time, my friends, I wish you all glory, fortune, and glory.